Hey everyone, Dean Kalora, CEO and co-founder of Title Tap. This is episode six of On Tap with Title Tap. I am super pumped. Uh, I sit down with Paul Stein and Bill Savota, co-founders of Close Simple. Uh, Close Simple is uh, designed to basically automate communication throughout the real estate transaction process. Uh, sending uh, notifications instantly at each milestone in the transaction, keeping everybody informed so there's no guesswork. Uh, it is an incredible tool and one that should be marketed uh, in your marketing. So we dive into that. We get to know a little bit more about Paul and Bill, how they met, the close, simple story. It, uh, it's a lot of fun and uh, learn a little bit more about them from a personal perspective. So hoping you guys are going to enjoy this one. Uh, can't wait to dive in. Thanks. All right, Paul, Bill, what's up? <laughs> what's up, Dean? How you doing? Doing great. How are you? Good, good. Uh, well, man, I am. I'm super pumped to uh, to be sitting here and and having this conversation with you guys. I know we've been trying to get on the calendar for for some time, and you know, at the time of this recording, we're out, you know naturally in the throes of probably one of the busiest seasons of both of our companies uh, with conferences. So thanks for for carving it out. Um, I, let's just dive in and get you kind of acquainted with the audience. Again, you know, uh, a lot of the folks tuning in are uh, attorneys, they're title agents. Um, the premise of this cast is to kind of take a look at uh, different technologies and evaluate, you know, uh, a little bit how we can leverage them in our marketing, learn a little bit about the humans behind the companies uh, that we keep hearing about. Uh, so really excited. Um, you know, I've known both of you for several years now, and you've just only grown. Uh, it's been really neat to watch your story and, 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 you know, see you sort of develop into the company you are today. Um, so yeah, let's get you acquainted with uh, the audience. So are you both, where are you calling from? Uh, we're Minnesota. both in the Minneapolis. Yeah, Minnesota. Nice, nice. So, so good time of year to be there right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is the time of the year when if you're gonna visit, come to Minnesota now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not anything for the last three months or who knows for the next three, but today it's like a gorgeous day in Minnesota, so we'll take it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely bank bank those days while you can. You lean on them, I'm, I'm sure, in the in the in the winter time. Um, awesome. And how did you two meet? Like, what's your story, Bill? Yeah. You want to tell it? Okay. Well, we were both at church together at the same time, like when we were younger. I mean, this was a decade ago and we were part of a, a small group, actually a business group in the morning and met at like 6 a.m., which as you're like in the mid twenties, like 6 a.m. or 6.30, like if it's the tall order. Oh gosh, it takes commitment. And uh, it was like a mentor group. You know, Paul likes to say it's the, it was the gray hairs and the spiky hairs, you know, like that's kind of how it was. And uh, we were both in it. And I got to see what Paul was doing. He was in digital advertising before being in title. And I owned a t-shirt company and we both saw our hustles and it was like, hey, someday it'd be fun to do something together. And uh, that's kind of how it happened. So church group of all things. <laughs> love it, man. Love it. Love it. Uh, and then talk to us a little bit about Close Simple. So like, how did that story start? Bill, keep going, man. You're crushing okay. it. <laughs> all right. Well, I mean, so let's fast forward, you know, that was like 2008-ish or so. 2011, um, a couple of years before that, about 2009-10, Paul had this idea for something and um, him basically constructing what this thing would be. And, you know, he got to the point where it was like, okay, I want to get this thing to market. And I was running a business already. I started it out of my dorm room years before. So I was the one guy he knew that started a business. We were grabbing sushi one day for lunch and just catching up. And I was like pumped about this idea he had. And he was just like, he needed help getting it off the ground. So next thing I know, like I'm pulled into this and, you know, we split equity there. But what the idea was, was I posted on Facebook in the next 20 days, I want to meet with 20 real estate agents to buy them a cup of coffee and get their feedback on an idea. The whole thing was Paul was really busy in his career right then. I had a little free time. Sure. Let's find a market for this cool tool. And, you know, that's kind of how it got started. We lined up an exclusive deal for this timeline tool based on conversations over coffee with a lot of real estate agents 
So launched in 2013, Paul, right? 2013. Yep. 1,200 real estate agents, number one Remax in the world on our tool. And you fast forward that to 2014, the owner pulls us aside. We thought we had the coolest thing, Paul. We thought we had the, like everybody in the world is going to use this thing. And uh, what happened then when, you know, we saw the data, well, how is it being used, Paul? Yeah, we, let's just say it wasn't. And, you know, what we realized <laughs> right away, uh, well, let's say like 20, 20, I get it. No, 30, I'm we, Classic we had like story. wild fans. Like there was, there were a few people that used that thing for the next like five years. And we just like, they loved it, but everyone else was not interested. What we realized is like brokers have vision for products, but then you have to go and sell it day after day, after day, after day to get real realtors to actually use it. And uh, at that point we were like, oh boy, how's this going to go? And what, what sort of got us into title was the owner of that company also had a big JV title company, the biggest title company in Minnesota, actually. And he said, you know, who could really use this as my title company? They have to do what I tell them to do. And uh, they said, could you revamp this for the title space? And Bill and I looked at each other like, yeah, absolutely. But what's title? <laughs> that's it. That was I'll never the, forget what everybody were. asks. That's what everybody <laughs> asks. Exactly. Yeah. So that's how we got introduced. We re, we revamped Close Simple for title. We rolled it out. We had no idea what we were doing. Um, and uh, within the first couple months, all of a sudden we had 1500 orders a month running through the software. Amazing. And that's how we got started. You know, so, you know, a lot has happened since then, but that's how we originally got into and, and Paul, like the simplest thing, like our idea was just to communicate during the real estate transaction. We thought realtors would need that. They didn't click buttons, but all of a sudden in title, they needed to communicate during the transaction. So it was like, we just stumbled across this thing and, you know, it's morphed today and we'll talk a little more what it is, but it's like, it's simple. It's communication during the closing process. Yeah. We just that helped. first, that first guy was like, can you just help my people tell a realtor that we started working on the file? Like that's all right. we're trying to accomplish here, you know, and back, cause you know, back in 2014, you know, that was sort of just a couple of years after all of a sudden title and escrow real estate attorneys are now thrust into like, you have to run your business in a way that's transparent. You have to market, you need to become a company, not just a acceptor of referrals. And then you're sort of always in the back background. And you know this too, Dean, because like what you're doing with websites and stuff, if you looked at an average title company's website back in 2014, you know, it was, if they had one. They, if they had one, because they didn't have to, they didn't have right. to like, they didn't have to work that way. So right. when we started getting in and we were like, yeah, we can help you communicate to bar to buyers and sellers. And they were like, what? Like we can talk directly to them. So it was a totally different world, you know, eight years ago, but that's how we got started. Yeah. Awesome. So, so I think you, you touched on this just, just to kind of restate. So the, so sort of the biggest challenge or the biggest problem you solve is this essence of communication during the transaction, which I think is, it makes or breaks the experience, right? I mean, in a lot of cases, it's probably the, the top, you know, when there is a complaint, it's, I don't know where I'm at, right? Or who do I need to talk to? Or, you know, yep. when am I closing? So, um, so awesome. And so speak a little bit more in terms of like, how you do that? Like, how does that work? Yeah. And I'll, I'll just say one of the biggest insights we had, even back when Bill was having conversations with the real estate you know, uh, agents was the biggest complaint at the end of any real estate transaction is the lack of communication. And like, if you even Google search today, that is, that is the biggest complaint. Um, and what we found was we've got all of these title and escrow folks, real estate attorneys, paralegals doing this amazing work on the back end, and they're doing all this stuff, but they don't actually tell anybody that they're doing that stuff. So they spend all their day just answering phone calls and emails all day long. And when we think about how we go in and actually help move uh, one of those organizations from being very reactive in what they're doing um, to more of a proactive stance is just helping them get credit. Like you're doing the work, you're completing right. it on time all the time. And then you just don't take that last step. So what we do is we integrate with the title produ production software that the, you know, uh, again, escrow processor, officer, paralegal, et cetera, are working on. And we make it so that in most cases, it's just automated. You just keep doing your work exactly the same way. You complete your task in whatever system. 
And then everybody involved in a transaction gets an update via email and text. So, nice. um, you know, the text message piece is a lot like Amazon, you know, letting you know your package is being delivered. My daughter's school texts me the day before she doesn't have school. Don't send your kid tomorrow. I mean, right. the education yeah. system Dean has like figured this out, like <laughs> the elementary schools. Yeah, we can, we can do this. And what that actually does then is, you know, it pierces through that realtors like cluttered inbox and says, Hey, commitments yeah. in your inbox, go find it don't call us in three days and tell us you didn't get it, you know, and that's really moving the needle. And so just, and we're really only doing this on like five milestones per transaction typically. And our large customers will tell us right away within the first 90 days, they see a 20%, at least a 20% reduction in inbound phone calls and emails. We call that noise. Yeah. The smaller ones will say our brokers tell call us and they're like, I call you 75% less than I did before. So wow. 20 to 75% reduction in noise in your day, it's palpable. Huge. They can feel yeah. it. And it's, it's really exciting to see the actual results come in. No, that's, uh, that's amazing. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it has such a, such a, a direct impact, right? Transaction by transaction on, on the experience as a whole. Um, so I think, again, kind of dovetailing into that paradigm of, of big versus kind of medium to small. So who is, I guess, the, uh, your typical... Uh, you know, who, who would make a, an ideal customer, let's say of close, simple, like, you know, what type of, is it, is it, is it size driven? Is it business model driven? Um, you know, if, if I'm someone looking around for an efficiency tool like this for communication, how do I know I'm the right fit? Yeah. Bill, do you want to take that one or at least the start of it? Yeah, I think let's take team this because you're talking to a lot of title companies. We're creating a lot of marketing pieces for this. So the easiest way to think of it is a title company that wants to grow we talk about growth versus scale. Like growth is the number of orders. You know, you want to go from 150 deals a month to 200, but scale is important also because it's, we don't want you just to have to hire more people to go from 150 to 200. So we want somebody that's scale-minded and growth-minded. They want to do more with less. And we've found our natural sweet spot is usually somebody that's over a hundred files a month starting all the way to the thousands. But if we're working with somebody that's doing about 50 files a month or 70, like their staff is scattered around and efficiency isn't their number one concern. It's mm. just in files closed. Once they reach that 100, 150 number, they have somebody in charge of like the processes. They have a manager over the operations area and that's really it. But Soft Pro Select is probably our biggest integration with automation right now. Like if anybody's on Soft Pro Select, we build it for them so that their staff is already just doing their stuff in Soft Pro click the button in soft pro and our emails and texts go out. So what our, I just heard there was like, I don't have to create a new habit. No habits. We do not no want new habits. Nothing. Yeah. We, we, when we think about our products, D and it's like, we don't believe our product starts after the title production software, but we believe it starts the minute they start processing a file in their production software. We know if we're asking someone to do more than like one, maybe two clicks, like to get something to happen on our, on our side, they're not going to do it. Correct. So yeah, yeah. there's never double data entry. If you're running automation today, we link up right with that. So there's no new habits. And if you're not running automation today and you want to start, we probably are like 50, 50 on our soft pro customers, specifically on people who were doing automation before, or were their first automation. So we come in, we do 95% of the implementation. We do all of the technical setup in soft pro or resware or Ram quest. Those are our three main integrations. We, our team will actually build it all out and, and show and teach your staff how to just complete a task. And so in that case, they just complete a task and that's the only new thing we're asking them to do. And then all of a sudden the business owner or the ops manager is going like, oh, and I can see where the transaction's at just by opening the file because I now have tasking and automation happening in the background. So there's awesome. other benefits that come along as well. So yeah. I will say this, we say a hundred plus, if you're under a hundred orders and you're like, that's, I got to get this in my business. It's more of a mentality. If you have yeah. the mentality of, I want to be tech forward and I want to start moving my business in a direction, you're still going to be a good fit. You're just going to have to make sure that like you're, you're making decisions along the way to ensure that there's going to be strong adoption, that you're going to see it through because, you know, you started your business. We did ours early on when you're small you're wearing 50 hats and all of a sudden you throw on the like tech implementation hat 
and that can be tough. So again, Bill's right. It's hundred plus. If you're under that, it's really like, yeah, but I really need to start doing some tech and I've got the right mentality. We'll take, we'll, we'll definitely work with you as well. Those are some of the most fun ones. Like I would say the most enjoyable because the owners are so pumped about it, but you need somebody that's like such a strong champion. Yeah. That- someone's got to own it. Yeah. You got to own it. Yeah. Totally. Got it. Totally get yeah. it. Cool. Um, so, okay. So, so talk to me a little bit about someone, you know, that you've got, um, currently that is just crushing it with, with your, your product. Um, how are they, when I say crushing it, I mean, yeah, they're, they're getting all those efficiencies, but have you seen, um, some of the power of kind of what has made it a true success, you know, an extension beyond just the operations. Again, this whole cast is premised on marketing, right? So, you know, have you seen some cool ways of people positioning, these capabilities kind of in their marketing uh, and, and how they're competing with the fact that they have like this instant notification, you know, uh, capability now at each stage of the transaction. Have you, have you, has anyone done something that's been pretty, pretty neat that you can share? Yeah, I'll give, I'll give you an example and then I'll let Bill give, give one too. And maybe you can tell the story. Well, I'll tee it up for you. But So when we talk about the benefits of rolling out close, simple, the first one we talked about efficiencies, time savings, you know, do more with less. And what we also say is, so we say save times number one, and then make more money is number two, save time, make more money. And I think, so every rollout we do, we, we provide like a one sheeter 30 day marketing plan. We give our clients the assets that they need to be able to go and promote this. Whether they do or not, again, they're wearing 50 hats, you know, is sure. is sort of like up to them. But even just using Close Simple throughout the process can drive a ton of business as well. So I'll let Bill talk about how we 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 the stories we hear about people taking our marketing stuff into the into sales conversations. But we just heard this great story, title company out of uh, Ohio, that um, we have a we have a system administrator who used to be a closer. And one of her friends was like, hey, can you close my deal for me? So she's like, sure, I I can take that on. So she wasn't referred the business by either side of the transaction. It was actually the buyer who asked, hey, can you do this deal? So she does the deal, runs it through Close Simple, sends the updates throughout the transaction. The two brokers come to the closing and they both say, look, we're we're never closing with anyone ever again. That was the best communication we've ever had in this industry. Love it. So she picked up two clients on accident just by providing like a very visual and like, you know, real time updates on what was happening. So we didn't get a, we need to go get a deal count. Like how many deals has that actually turned into? But when you've got two brokers that have never worked with your title company before showing up, you can start to think about, Hey, there's always a non-referring side in every transaction. So true. Just by doing your job, you get this really great marketing hack of like ops driving this process that turns into a marketing play. And then all of a sudden you can go out, you know, like some of our clients will even send a notification to the non-referring side at the end of the transaction. Just says, hey, hope you enjoyed this. We run every transaction we do like this. Um, If you're interested in learning more, let us know. So like it's it's pretty cool to see how just using it turns it into a marketing tool. And then Bill, you can talk about how um, our clients use it in, the sale, in their sales process too. Yeah, one, I'd say this is almost like a secret sauce of ours, but there's nothing secret about it. We don't put Close Simple on anything. Like the title company that uses Close Simple, we don't have Close Simple on their emails. We don't have Close Simple on their texts. It's their title company. We want them to really take the center stage and get the credit for all the hard work they're doing. You know, so we'll actually have, you know, we have our timeline, like we have the pizza tracker for title or, you know, whatever you want to do, we brand the emails for the title company. But if a title company wants to call it like the all American title timeline, do it. If you want to call it the all American pizza tracker, do it. Like we do not care. We're going to make it for you to stand out. I love it. We had one client and they were in Texas doing about 100 to 150 deals a month, maybe. And she just onboarded Close Simple and she just had like her little screenshots on her phone of the emails and texts. She gets a meeting with this broker who's like, you know, Dean, you're in Florida, right? Correct. Yeah. What city are you again? So we're, I'm in Tampa. 
Tampa, you've got to have one of those realtors that's on all the billboards and stuff, right? Oh, we do. We have several. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, I think we're, we're the realtor mecca of, of the country. We have, the, so. we have like the most recognizable guy who's everywhere. Like he's yeah. on every billboard. And then in the summer, you'll see the planes flying around with like his banner his on. His banner. You cannot. <laughs> you, I'm, and I'm like sending Bill text to this guy. Anyway, yeah. keep going, uh, Bill. <laughs> You know, we all have those agents in our, in our cities. And one of the big things is how do you get their business? Like, what do you do to separate your title company from the next one when you're going after people that you want to win their deals? Well, this client of ours, she got a meeting with this guy. And up to that point, she was doing zero deals. Her title company is doing zero deals with him and his team. Well, she walked into that meeting and I always like to say, you got to change the game. It's like, Dean, if you were going to challenge um, LeBron James to a game of something and you wanted to win, what's the one game you probably wouldn't challenge LeBron James to? Donut eating. No. Yeah. Basketball, of course. Yeah. You wouldn't, <laughs> you wouldn't, yeah. You would not challenge LeBron or Michael Jordan to basketball. Right. Yet title companies are going head to head against every other title company going, we close right. on time. We close accurate. We have locations. We have attorneys, the same type of stuff. We're, we're, we're playing by the same rules. We got to change the game completely. So this client walks into that broker and goes, look, I, I want to show you something we just invested in. If you close with us, you'll get these emails, these texts, shows the screenshots, walked out of there with 20 deals a month. Yeah. Yeah. 20 deals. That's amazing. So, so what I'm hearing from both of you and what, what I absolutely get, get so excited about for uh, for folks, you know, exploring options like this is we all hear to your point, I deliver amazing service. My service is, well, it's one thing to say it. It's another thing to show me how, right. And deliver on the promise with actual tangible, like how you're going to execute, right. Yeah. That's relatable to me and aligned with, with my business flow. So here's what I'm, I'm guessing, Bill, that, that broker, which uh, and realtor, a lot of them, uh, you know, they have no time that they're, they're a high producing realtor. They are on the phone inundated to your point, you know, Paul earlier, they're snowed in email wise. Um, so it's only text that they're looking at and they really only care about a handful of things, you know, when they're getting their, their paycheck, if there's a problem, how you're solving it and, you know, where their deals at in, in the flow. Right. Uh, so being able to receive those uh, with confidence that, hey, you're, you're going to get this, not because it's a manual thing that someone has to remember to do. It's programmed. It's in our text. Like you're going to get these because systematically we've got it built in to register at every stage of the process. Now you're telling me like a value chain here tied to your ability, right? And so this is, this is paramount to kind of to bring it home, right? Like how someone can stand on top of the technology that you guys provide and really add a story that, that connects to busy people, right? And, and to give them the information that they, they really, really care about so they, they don't have to spend that 45 seconds trying to call you or shoot you an email that gets lost or a text, you know, and, you know, knowing that you've got, you know, the backing of um, a technology that this is all you do, right? Um, it, it's, you don't have to figure that part out. You just can focus on your delivery of, of communication and service and, and know that you got this, this part in the bag. So um, I think that's brilliant. So I'm going to use this opportunity real quick too, to just put a shout out. So uh, uh, Bill and Paul on Close Simple, the, we've got them you know, kind of in flow right now, and there's going to be some announcements, but I'm going to say kind of early, at the time of this recording, uh, that they are uh, absolutely going to be part of our Title Tap uh, Hub ecosystem. So, a lot of what we're talking about, you know, in terms of being able to articulate some of this value chain of what's possible, and uh, knowing, and I didn't realize that Bill that they could kind of customize um, whatever, custom. yeah, whatever they wanted to, whatever they wanted to call this, right? So, oh, yeah. So, you know, whatever your model is, your branding is, you know, it, it can it can be part of that, but. You know, through the hub, they have kind of a one-click option so that any kind of collateral that they want to present um, out there, you know, on their website to point to, you know, that, or share across social that this is an ability that they have. This is what you can expect with when you're closing with ABC Title, right? And and it's it's tech driven, right? We understand you're busy, and and that's only going to continue in, in this market. It's becoming even more competitive. Uh, we're you know. I think anyone, everyone can agree where it's shifted. You know, we are definitely in a purchase market and you have to 
um, you know, shake the trees right now to really get people's attention, you know, so yeah. this is one of those attention grabs that, you know, no one has time, you know, and they're all looking at ways of doing it better, faster, uh, and more profitable. So this is a great way to kind of add that to the fold. And, right, I'm assuming it also extends to a sales pitch that that broker and realtor can have with their buyer or seller. Exactly. Right. So now I'm standing on, you know, the the strength of my title company, knowing that, I can, I can vouch for the communication that you're going to have, Mr. Buyer, Mr. Seller, right? And you're not going to be, get lost in translation. You're going to know exactly where you are every stage of the, of the process, yeah. right? So I, I absolutely love it. Um, is there anything that I have not asked that you want to share? I don't think so. I mean, I think you're hitting on the head with thinking about how are we approaching this market today? And if we can start by just going, let's implement stuff that's going to increase our capture rate, that's going to make sure that we're getting all the deals from all of our customers, you know, things that are going to make every realtor you're already working with as sticky as possible, and then make you stand out against, and it's a dog fight. You, you said it, you know, it's, it's shake the trees, but I mean, like, you know, for the last two years, it's been, we, Paul, great idea. We can't even like get to the order. Correct. Like, don't talk. We, didn't, we haven't even <laughs> talked about sell more deals for the last two years. You know, it's all been about efficiencies, but here we are now yeah. and it matters. And if you want to continue on the growth trajectory that you've started over the past couple of years, or make sure that you're keeping the lights on, that's really the way where they have to go. I do think like, there's one other thing, Dean, that I'd love for us to just real quick hit on. Do it. You mentioned this concept of customer service and how you have to go out and show it. And Bill has this great philosophy and this, this sort of like difference between service and care. And I think it'd be great just to have him kind of like talk about that because I do Please, think it yeah. illustrates getting from a reactive state to a more proactive. So Bill, I don't know if you want to like, just, yeah. just tell everybody about that, that concept. This goes back to before I got in the title, you know, we all have the before we got in the title stories. Um, I owned a t-shirt company, online custom apparel. We did stuff for like LinkedIn, Facebook, Google, medium.com. And it was all online. Never got to see our clients face to face. You know, if we're working with Facebook, we ship it to Palo Alto. We're not meeting them in the office. And I got challenged by a mentor years ago. He's like, what separates your company from the next? And I was like, we're great at service, you know, this and that. And he's like, yeah, I get it. I'm like, we offer five-star service. And he's like, why five? And I'm like, because that's Google, you know, that's as much as Google. And he's like, well, why don't you go like one more than Google? And I was like, what do you mean? He's like six stars. And I go, why six? He goes, because it's one more than Google offer, you know, allowed yeah, yeah. for rating. And then I was like, okay, six star care in my world service was that's our standard service is reactionary to the questions coming in you know if you break your phone or you go you need an oil change where do you go you go to the service department and you don't like it you know what i mean it's obligatory it's like i gotta do this care on the other hand is kind of like dean you ever go to one of those fancy salons where they like tip your head back and they give you the massage and the shampoo of course <laughs> let me look at this yeah. guy I mean, look at his hair. Is. Look at your hair. <laughs> look at yours, man. I'm I'm trying to catch up. I, actually, I, I'm I I I have, and um, you know, yeah, the hot the hot steam towel. I mean, it's yeah. I get it, man. Yeah. Here is you didn't even know you wanted it, needed it, or deserved it until you experienced it. Then you could never go back to normal, and that's really a differentiator. Right. You think about it, like even an oil change place. The disruption that happens in that industry is, well, let's bring the oil change to you. It's not, you know, Jiffy Lube, less time. It's now we're going to bring an oil change to you. I can call up an oil change on my app and they'll come and do it at my car while I'm working. Like, so care is proactive. It's like, if I call an Uber right now, I can watch it come to me. Dean, if we called one, I'd watch it go left turn, right turn, left turn. And if they yep. take a right instead of a left, what happens? What do you do if they take a wrong turn while they're getting to you? You freak out because you're sure. like, you go from five minutes to 12. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. It's on your time. And it's that's inconvenient. Really, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So care is proactive. It allows the user to feel in control. Yeah. I think that's great. I think that's great, Bill. And, and it does speak um, to really, you know, this idea of competitive advantage and distinction, right? That's right. Because, because I, again, what, what, I hear, and I want the audience to really hone in on is care is memorable. Yes. Right. Care is memorable. You, you, 
will be hard pressed to go back to an old way if you got something more convenient, quality was not diluted, uh, and it just it made your life better without you doing more work. <laughs> I would say you can go right. through the motions or you can create emotions. There you go. Go through the motions or create emotions. Like yeah. you can do one of two things and we're left here. I feel, feel like a lot of people in the title industry are getting stuck going through the motions. It's been a crazy season. Yeah. And, but if you can do a little more and create an emotion and that's really where close, simple shines, we're not even making them do more. It's, we just do it for you. Yeah. So <laughs> what we want to do is combine that with making sure that you share that message and articulate that capability you know, and, and, you know, 50%, we always kind of share this with a lot of the marketing that we do is, is having a fantastic capability, you know, tool, um, technology, but the other 50% is really bringing about awareness of that, right? Yeah. Because it can only go so far. Uh, and, you know, it, you should be talking about it today. I mean, you, it already sits under your hood, you know, so, so why not, you know, shout it from the rooftops. Awesome. Guys, Fantastic. Um, how can someone get a hold of you if they want to learn more about Close Simple? Yeah, so you can always go to closesimple.com. We've got a lot, you know, demos available out there if you really want to kind of dig in and see how things work. Um, if you go there, you can kind of check out your integration and see what's available with that. All of our pricing is right on the page. You can get, get information there and there's clear next steps there. But I'll say for this audience, if you want to email me, I'm just paul at closesimple.com. I'd love to set up some time to walk you through how Close Simple works. And you can bypass all that stuff if you're ready to have a conversation with us. So just paul at closesimple.com and uh, we'll take really good care of you. Uh, this is not a service shop. We'll literally <laughs> take good care of you. Love it. Love it. Um, well, great. I guess with the last few seconds I've got to just any last um, thought leadership, maybe on where markets might be going, um, any tips for success you want to leave with the audience? Yeah, I, I, I think I'll, I'll just piggyback on what Bill said and, uh, and say that if you're not providing a transparent experience, if you're not going the extra mile for customers right now, um, you know, there's a good chance you're going to be behind. And as we get into this, this new, we're, I, I'll call it a new era of title where we're catching up with the rest of what's going on in the world. Bill likes to say that your competition in terms of what experience is, is not the title company down the street. It is Uber. It is Amazon. It is some of these, these experiences that are top of, you know, top of their game across that people are experiencing every single day and they're getting into this experience with you and they're going, hold on, what, how does this work? What's going on? And like, that is a feeling that they're not used to feeling anymore. So investing in transparency, investing in your communication strategy can pay a ton of dividends. And it's, we make it very reasonable in terms of how much it costs you to really start to get into that space and look and feel like a modern day experience and what's happening to people in their lives. Love it, man. Love it. Yeah. So thanks again, both you guys for carving out the time, sharing your story. It was awesome to catch up. And uh, I'm sure for those of you that circulate a little bit in the conference circuit, uh, you will you will see either Bill, Paul, or both of them uh, at many of those. So don't be shy. Go up and say hi. Uh, gentlemen, thanks again for coming on. Great to Thank see you, you, Dean. Thanks so Bye. much. See ya.